This documentary is a record of land reclamation in one of Victoria's rich irrigation districts. It tells of the progress which has been made by irrigation farmers working side by side with the engineers and scientists of the State Rivers and Water Supply Commission. In the central Gippsland area of the McAllister Irrigation District, summer rainfall is too low for the satisfactory growth of pastures and crops. But with the development of irrigation in the area, production from the land has been greatly increased and has enabled a large number of irrigated farms to be established on land which was formerly used for much less productive dry land farming. Irrigation, though, can also bring problems, and one of the most serious of these can be water logging and salting. In this district, the problem of water logging first occurred in 1952, and because it seriously reduced production from thousands of acres, it was to develop a method of control. As a first measure, a network of surface drains was installed to remove water which ponded on the land as a result of over-irrigation and heavy rainfall. But even after the installation of these drains, investigations showed that several thousand acres of land such as this still remained saturated to within inches of the surface. To overcome this problem, it was necessary to develop a method of underground drainage to supplement the surface drainage system, remove water from within the soil itself, and lower the underground water table to a safe level. To locate the source of underground water, 200 observation wells were sunk over an area of 50 square miles. In most wells, saturated sand beds were found at depths between 20 and 50 feet. When the drilling program was completed and the observation wells fitted with galvanized piping and capped, the water table levels were measured at regular intervals and fluctuations were recorded. These fluctuations proved to be a valuable indication as to the cause of the problem of water logging and salting. After the start of irrigation in 1952, water from several sources caused the water table in the sand beds to rise rapidly. One such source was deep penetration of irrigation water. Other sources were seepage from earthen channels and also heavy rainfall, particularly when following a general irrigation. Underground water moved through the sand and overlying clay beds under pressure, waterlogging lower land. By 1959, useful plant cover was killed over much of the lower land as the salty water table rose to the surface. Evaporation then caused salts to become concentrated in the surface soil and the land became bare and completely unproductive. Only a few salt-tolerant weeds remained. This map of the central Gippsland district shows the areas which were underlain by high water tables in 1959. Investigation showed that pumping from the sand and gravel beds was a quick and promising method of lowering the water table and also the first step in returning saline land to its former productivity. Good pumping sites, however, were not easy to locate, and a large number of deep well holes had to be installed before effective drainage pump sites were found. In some areas where underground water levels were very close to the surface, it was found that land could be drained by tapping the sand and gravel beds and allowing the underground water to run freely into deep surface drains instead of pumping it to the surface.
free-flowing bores are an economical form of drainage as they avoid the cost of pumping water to the surface and still lower the water table effectively in some areas. In 1963, seven electrically operated pumps and 70 free-flowing bores were being used to remove groundwater from the sand and gravel beds throughout the district. The electric pumps are operated intermittently and are only used when the water levels in the observation wells reach a high level. These measures have been successful in lowering the water table levels over large areas. After the water table has been lowered, the next problem is to remove the salt remaining in the surface soil and bring back the fertility of the land. Although rainfall would in time remove much of this salt, it would take many years before the soil became fully productive again. Reclamation investigations on experimental plots such as this one have shown that if land is well drained to lower the water table, then graded and irrigated correctly, the salt can quickly be leached out of the soil. Reclamation to this stage has taken less than a year. To advise and help the State Rivers and Water Supply Commission with local aspects of the reclamation work, a drainage committee comprising representatives of local irrigation farmers and departmental officers was formed. This badly salt-affected land, which is to be used for large-scale reclamation purposes, is being inspected by the committee members. Detailed proposals for the work to be done are being considered and a plan of action will be decided upon. The land, which had been very badly salted and completely bare for several years, had never been irrigated but had been affected by the generally high water table in the area. Using heavy equipment, the land was first cleared of trees and stumps. Having completed clearing, the land was then cultivated several times by disking and then harrowed to even out the surface. The final step in preparing the land for irrigation was to grade it very carefully and subdivide it into irrigation bays, ensuring that the correct slopes and drainage were provided. Before a crop could be sown, it was necessary to irrigate the land several times to leach salt from the surface soil. Millet was sown in January. This is the same area the following April. Careful layout, regular leaching irrigations and underground pumping reduced the salt content of the surface soil and a reasonable crop of millet was obtained. A crop of barley will now be grown and afterwards, if the salt content is low enough, the land will be sown to perennial pasture. As a result of drainage works and cooperation between irrigators and government departments, problems which formerly were a threat to productivity have been overcome and fertility and prosperity are being restored to the waterlogged and salt-affected parts of the central Gippsland irrigation area.